Hello, my name is Gwendolyn Coffey and I'm a social work major. As a social worker, we are required to communicate in writing for a range of purposes and audiences. Social workers take a unique approach to thinking and writing in that we view social issues and problems from a broader perspective. main rhetorical conventions that I used in my paper were logos, ethos, and pathos. Logos because since it is a journal, um, I had to use lots of different studies and references to studies and statistics to use as proof in my research. Main rhetorical conventions that I used in my paper were logos, ethos, and pathos. Logos because since it is a journal, um, I had to use lots of different studies and references to studies and statistics to use as proof in my research. Ethos because through the rhetorical conventions that I chose not to imitate were rhetorical questions because they seemed inappropriate, colloquial vocabulary and expressions because they are also inappropriate in professional writing, and kairos, which is the lesser used rhetorical appeal and is often used with and alongside ethos, logos, and pathos and means to take advantage of or even create a perfect moment to deliver a particular message. The topic of my paper is how myths and stereotypes about male rape affect male victims. Some common myths surrounding male rape are men can't be sexually assaulted, only gay men are sexually assaulted, only gay men sexually assault other men, men cannot be sexually assaulted by women, they ask for it, most rapists are strangers, rapists aren't like ordinary people, some people can't rape, men who sexually assault come from a particular part of society, rape in gay couples does not exist, and men who are raped are scarred for life. All of my annotated bibliographies are either of other research journals about males who have been raped, research that is being done about the effect that rape has on men, or case studies and surveys that have been done with male victims of rape, and also on subjects that have not been assaulted to see what myths and stereotypes are most commonly believed and projected onto male survivors of rape. My guiding research question was, what are the myths and stereotypes surrounding male rape and what effect do they have on male victims of sexual assault? My thesis statement is that male victims of sexual assault should not have to feel silenced by stereotypes and myths about their experience, nor be blamed for their rape. The key points about my paper were mostly about the fact that when men come forward 
Myths, stereotypes, and victim blame are often used against them, even in a court of law. It has also been found that when men go to police, police stereotype them. They couldn't have been raped because of them being male, that that doesn't happen, or that if they were indeed raped, it must have been because they were gay. Throughout my paper, I used case studies and other credible research journals as supporting evidence to answer my question about how myths about rape, stereotypes about rape, and victim blaming affect male victims of rape. It is important that we educate ourselves about this topic because it is one that is not often talked about very much. And because of this, it needs to be brought to light so that more people will learn about it and be able to understand what male victims of rape go through. I stated in my paper, it is still important that we talk about this issue so that we can learn how to handle the situation properly if we were to encounter it. We must bring more awareness about this issue to not. I stated in my paper, it is still important that we talk about this issue so that we can learn how to handle the situation properly if we were to encounter it. We must bring more awareness about this issue.